I'm going to go ahead and guess you already know what it is that we're looking at here. Like you could even name it. And you probably even jump to saying, oh, that's a table of data. Perhaps you'll say it's a spreadsheet. Perhaps you'll say it's a database. And you'd be right on all of those things because that's essentially what's happening here is we have a table with columns and rows that store some data. Now, software is actually really good at this. This is one of the things that it's been doing for a long time because it was so critical to remember data from the early days of computing. Right, so we want to remember data and we want to be able to use this data. And what we see here is a very basic way to remember and use this data, not just in a video, but actually on the presentation software I'm using will remember this data. I can close it down and open it back up and it's still there. Now, this is great for our local computers, but it's not until we actually combined with one other major technology, which is a website, right? So a website is just a document it's a document much like you would open up a Word document and you type out some stuff. Perhaps you put pictures in there as well. It is still a document. So these things we are going to uncover a lot more. And each one of these technologies can actually exist separate from each other. So a web page can exist all by itself without a database. But it's not until we have a database connected to it that the data on that web page can be displayed based on what's stored in the database. I'm going to assume that this is like very intuitive for you already. Like you probably already understand this at some level because you have used web applications where you, you, you fill out information, you hit submit or save, and then you come back later and it's still there, right? So you probably already get this, but this is the fundamental part of all web applications. They show a web page and a lot of times it's based off of what's in the database. So the interaction sort of looks like this, right? There's you, Jon Snow, not knowing anything. Go into a web page and click in on a server. That server interacts with the database. It also interacts with the web page and it sends those things back so you can actually view it, right? That's really the key here. And basically every web application works this way. Every website also works this way, but it might not have that database in there, right? That's not always required, as we'll see. And then finally, the biggest question you should be asking and why you're taking this series is where does Django fit into this? Well, Django actually is going to be handling the server, the web page, and the interaction with the database. Django itself is not a database. We have to use something else for that. But Django handles this thing so it's a lot cleaner and a lot easier to do. So we're going to be spending a lot of time unpacking this as it relates to Django specifically, but this is just the rule of thumb. You as a user or any user will request a web page of some kind or a URL of some kind that will be sent to a machine or a computer. A server is just a computer that runs all the time. And then you've got a database in there. And then all of that stuff is going to respond back with a web page enriched with some of that data from your database. That is it. And the reason we use Django is to simplify this process. But there are many other web application frameworks or many other things like Django that can do this process. Like that it's just like this. But you'll see once you actually start to learn Django, handling this is actually pretty simple to do once you understand some of the basics of Python and some of the basics of Django. So we can actually get to this point really, really quickly, which is our first goal. So let's go ahead and take a look at the code.